peace, freedom. Uh, Expression of emotion may happen when the system moves. When energy that was stored or bound up in the muscles begins to dissipate. She basically sells queefs in a jar that are supposed to like realign your energy electromagnetic field and reset your chakra vibrations to send you to a different dimensional plane where you're healthier. It's a bunch of garbage. And I'm gonna put it there for you. Now I had predicted that this candle didn't exist because I said it sold out immediately at $75. I feel like it's just a marketing ploy, but I'm wrong. Here's the candle. People actually bought it and it actually was sold out. Surrounding yourself with love and the right amount of self-care is always the way forward. everybody welcome back to my channel it has been such a long time since i last made a video but i am back and i am ready to make videos again i did not disappear when you needed me the most have you guys been feeling well well i hope you guys are because today's topic is going to be on wellness culture aligning your chakras manifesting crystals looking for ways to live longer doing whatever this is so stored or bound up in the muscles and allow energy that's been bound in our bodies to move through this woman we are going to pretend we didn't hear that so i realized that this is a topic that i'm pretty late in talking about literally not too long ago there was a huge trending topic on youtube and instagram and just honestly everywhere about basically gwen and her business goop all these big youtubers were making like commentary and reaction videos to her goop lab goop got really big to the point where gwen got her own netflix show which then made more people react to this mess and it was very popular to comment on it and make fun of it because well it's very um interesting Goop is a wellness and lifestyle brand made by Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwen launched Goop in September 2008, so it's a pretty old brand, but it first started off as like this weekly newsletter providing new age advice, such as going gluten-free, detox smoothies that can help cure you of many diseases, which let's be honest, there are plenty of brands like Goop. However, Goop claims to be very, very different. And in the way, they kind of are. Because because you see, according to Gwen, even the word goop means nothing, but can also mean everything, everything. All, at all at once. Goop sells all types of items to make your life better and healthier and more aesthetic, such as this $200 croissant and these candles. I wanted to buy a goop item for this video just to do something a little different, kind of like reviewing their products. You know, we could make a cute little fun bit. However, <laughs> I realized that the majority of these items are completely overpriced and completely useless. For example, let's just play a game real quick. How much do you think these pants are? $50? $100? $200? Nope, $354. You know how much Robux I could get for $354? None, because my parents won't let me. There is a sickness spreading, a sickness that everyone has that you don't even know that you have. And that sickness is not being in tune with yourself. Also, sorry if my jacket is making a lot of squeaky noise. It's very cold in my office right now and I refuse to turn on my heater cause that bill is too damn high and down with capitalism. Anyways, and that sickness is not being in tune with yourself. But luckily for you, you can give your money to companies like Goop. You can pay for extravagant cruises. You can pay for yoga, meditation classes, paying for expensive treatments, expensive diets, until you are truly one with yourself. I mean, just look at Gwen. Her company is valued at 250 million. Goop can stand for everything, but it sure don't stand for broke. Wellness culture has this issue to it where you almost have to pay your way to feeling like you've achieved true happiness and wellness and almost like this 
false spirituality, which doesn't seem very hashtag woke or hashtag relaxing to me because wellness culture is actually very extremely scummy and scammy despite preaching the message of being able to provide you with the answer of the meaning to your life. And even though wellness culture is all about health, it's surprisingly not really about your health. And so even though I'm very late in speaking about this topic, I want to talk about it anyways. So today's video is going to be a very long one. We are going to be talking about Lord, Gwyneth Paltrow, pseudo spirituality, cult marketing, and the real reason why wellness culture is so popular now. Definitely get snuggled up with a blanket, grab some tea, light a candle, and let's, and let's achieve, achieve our, our inner, inner selves. selves. But first, you guys know the drill. I gotta pay my bills. So here's a word from our sponsor. Better Internet Initiative. Better Internet Initiative is funded by the Fellow Americans Education Fund. Y'all, there's so much going on in the world right now that we just want some good news. With the infrastructure bill, we are seeing that there is clear evidence that our economy works best when we put workers, families, and communities at the center of it. Duh. The economy is powered by us. But let's just be honest, for too long, most of us have been locked out of this country's prosperities. I'm over here struggling to pay my rent while Jeffree Star is doing his makeup inside a Tesla. But for example, did you know 45% of Americans don't have access to reliable transportation? The infrastructure bill is investing in healthy and sustainable transportation options for millions of Americans, focusing on safety, equity, and climate change mitigation. And did you also know that more than 30 million Americans lived in areas where water systems violated safety rules at the beginning of last year, everyone should have access to clean water. And thankfully, this bill seeks to do just that, to deliver clean water to more than 400,000 schools, childcare facilities, lower income communities, and Native American lands. The American Jobs Plan is seeking to transform the U.S.'s infrastructure, providing good quality jobs that pay prevailing wages in safe and healthy workspaces, all while ensuring that workers have the freedom and choice to organize, join a union, and more. So now you guys have some good news and some facts. Make sure you're using your civic right to be engaged in these types of conversations within your community, whether it's writing to your state representative or voting in the next local, state, or federal election. Your voice really does matter, especially right now. So thanks again to Better Internet Initiative for sponsoring this video and for helping me educate some of y'all. The term wellness was popularized in the late 1950s by Dr. Halbert L. Dunn, the so-called father of the very movement that I'm talking about in this video. Dr. Halbert defined high-level wellness as a condition of change in which the individual moves forward, climbing toward a higher potential of functioning. Dunn's wellness is subjective and based on perception and the uniqueness of the individual. Dunn's ideas have gained a steady following in the 21st century. In 2015, the global wellness industry was valued at 3.7 trillion and without the wealth and leisure today's wellness culture wouldn't exist basically people started to realize that if you grab spiritual practices from india and repackage it and sell it to desperate people who don't know the actual history of any of these spiritual practices in india people will buy it because not only now are they achieving something that can make them hashtag woke and special or achieving a higher sense of self they're also achieving a sense of wellness and now the wellness industry is valued at four trillion dollars and it's growing more and more every day and especially with companies like goop who have perfected their craft of repackaging poc culture to sell to middle-aged wine moms wellness culture has got like very popular and very normalized within social media that you might not even know that you're being exposed to it. It's the perfect Instagram feed that you see where everyone has a beautiful home. They're always on vacation somehow. They look healthy and rich with these perfect bodies with sustainable clothing, drinking smoothies and doing yoga poses. It's those people who seem to just have it all together. It's the type of Instagram pages where you kind of run into. Seems like they have everything so put together Together, it makes you reevaluate your life. They're out here in Tulum, Mexico, smiling and walking away to a copyright free song while I'm just sitting here eating chips and watching anime. And I just have to go pause and be like, is Makoto from Swim Free worth it? The answer 
is yes, he is. But in this context, no. So you feel like you need a change. So then you start getting into a health kick and then you deep dive onto how to change up your routine. What foods can you eat? What can you do to make yourself feel well? Until you slowly realize, hmm, this lifestyle is extremely expensive. I can't afford yoga classes or good supplements. I can't afford to have a $5 smoothie every time I go out. I can't afford that handmade macrame piece from Etsy. And honestly, it's kind of like the epitome of privilege. And this critique of wellness culture never has been really brought up in the past. And that's mostly because, well, for the longest time, wellness culture was associated with wellness. However, because of brands like Goop, the very blatant and obvious fact that these people live privileged lives is something that was being brought up in many people's commentary. And even though these popular commentary videos were from a while back, there's actually someone very famous who's been making satirical art and doing commentary on this lifestyle in their own way. And that's actually Lord. Lord and her new album, Solar Power. Stream now on Spotify or die. You see, there's an archetype when it comes to wellness culture. White women with very lean bodies and super long hair, with a bare face with not even a stitch of makeup, sun-kissed skin, loose clothing, and Lord kind of makes fun of this in her music videos. And we see this satirical artwork in Lord's music video Mood Ring. It's almost like this meta commentary on wellness culture. Wearing a blonde wig like Nicole Kidman within a group of women in jade green performing sun salutations and turning through old spiritual texts and playing with crystals. When Lord was asked what Mood Ring was about, she said that was basically satire, almost cosplaying and poking a bit of fun at Gwen. But there's a ton of privilege left unchecked in this realm of white women mindlessly appropriating indigenous cultures for profit and pretending it's for their spirituality and wellness. I mean, Lord even mentions this in her lyrics. Let's fly somewhere Eastern, they'll have what I need. Now come on now, Shakespeare could never. These are just a few examples of how wellness culture has totally made its way into like mainstream mainstream media. That's not to say that wellness culture hasn't been like that before, but it definitely, you know, definitely not to this extent, no. And obviously it causes one to sit here and question why is it so big? What What is it about it? Why are people so obsessed with it? Is it really bad that people are obsessed with being healthy and wanting to be well? What's the harm in that? This is why I love talking about wellness culture. There's so many mysteries behind it because wellness culture is literally how Americans continue to somehow profit off of something a person of color has been doing for decades. They take it, say it's theirs, whitewash it, and then sell it to Lululemon wearing Starbucks drinking hoes. An example of this is yoga has become less of a, how do I say this, what it used to be. Because see now it's a lot more mainstream and is considered now a non-Indian practice. Isn't necessarily bad, especially when you actually bother to do your research, appreciate the art and the benefits and cultural significance that it has to Indian people. But there's a big difference between participating in yoga and understanding its history and then just doing yoga to say that I do yoga. Who knew that in one of my videos I'd be gatekeeping yoga? The reason why I bring up yoga, colonization, and all this stuff is because when I say that people in wellness culture literally take POC culture and try to benefit from it and sell it and say that they came up with it, is because Gwyneth literally did that. Gwen literally said that she made yoga a thing. As if India just doesn't exist anymore. And yoga isn't the only example of this. It's actually a very huge problem that a lot of people are talking about. These traditions and natural ingredients and these spiritual practices, they no longer have their original meaning, but instead they have been transformed into commodities. Because now yoga is associated with influencers with perfect lifestyles. It's considered trendy and part of wellness. And because of this, the cost of mats, classes, gear have become increasingly exclusive to upper class white women, even though people of color were the ones who originated it. Another example of this is sage burning, which has 100% been exoticized. And this word I think encapsulates kind of what I'm talking about. Exotifying something is when a practice or person of different cultures are portrayed or regarded as exotic in a way to glamorize them. The Western world often takes these practices and makes them into a warped narcissistic 
narcissistic version, one that takes a lot of money to be a part of. Wellness has almost become extremely elitist because of the amount of people it shuts out. Do economic pressures explain the re-emergence of wellness culture? Because the re-emergence of wellness culture is every so often. However, the reason why it's become so popular is because it's almost been consistent in its re-emergence. It's here, it's been here for a while and has been slowly just kind of going up, up and up. Whenever there's economic pressure or natural disasters or disasters in general in which make the zeitgeist of a generation feel anxious or not at ease, the re-emergence of wellness culture ends up becoming something very, very prevalent because people are looking for answers. There are two things people go to in very desperate times, which is one, any way to find some more money, and two, religion. But religion is such a harsh word, isn't it? Well, it's a good thing that when it comes to wellness culture and modern times, we don't have religion. We have spirituality. spirituality. In place of religion, we now kind of have this obsession with pseudo uh, spirituality. Instead of going to Sunday church, we now do hashtag self-care Sunday rituals. Except of course with one distinction, the wellness industry is driven by a massive consumer imperative. It requires that we buy things and lots of them. I don't think buying things of this nature is inherently bad, but I do think it might become a little bad and a little cultish when these things replace family and support systems. This falls under pseudo spiritual marketing, which goes back to what I mentioned earlier, you know, the yoga, smooth these long blonde hair, no makeup, basically what Lord was making fun of, except <laughs> it's very much real in these, you know, communities. It's no coincidence that wellness culture has a lot of money connected to it and is also an aesthetic. And that's because it's a product. And when you have a product, you gotta know how to sell it. You gotta know exactly how to sell to the audience that you want to target. That audience being rich white people who pretend that they're not religious yet practice pseudo-spirituality to feel something. And how do you do that? With pseudo-spiritual marketing and most importantly, cult branding, which are surprisingly very popular right now. Pseudo-spiritual marketing and cult branding are two of the latest mass marketing techniques. Pseudo-spiritual marketing is designed to convince consumers that brand loyalty will provide identity and meaning in their lives. And this type of marketing is a little different from the usual type of marketing that we see. You know, ads usually promise us good products, but the brands that exercise pseudo-spirituality marketing and cult branding are offering us something a lot more which is products that will give meaning to our lives. A life filled with healthy foods, healthy living, products that are gonna change your life, such as this thing. But I mean, this is kind of messed up, right? It's almost kind of more scummy and scammy than normal adverts because general adverts create a problem, right? For example, social media convinces us that our skin isn't good enough. If there's pimples or blemishes, they tell us that that's a problem and then they sell us a product to fix that problem, such as foundation. You feel bad, you buy it, and so you fix your temporary problem. They're profiting off of your insecurities. But when it comes to wellness culture, spiritual marketing is basically focusing on how the product is based on human need. The human human need of personal well-being, health, and wealth. It basically sells the idea that we can possibly be aligned with the universe, but if these products only ever come out to help us solve temporary problems, then what is the purpose of wellness culture? What is the problem that wellness culture is trying to solve? What exactly is wellness culture trying to profit off?
The world right now is such a scary place. It's filled with horrible people, natural disasters, national tragedies, illness, and even death. But luckily for you, I have the way for you. I can offer you a new journey, a new mindset through vaginal jade eggs. Yeah, I can't do this. Wellness culture profits off of your fear, anxieties, and the imminent truth that we're all going to have to face one day, which is death. CBD, crystals, alternative medicine, these holistic approaches, alternative medicine, anything that could absolutely help you feel better seems so enticing more than ever, especially in a time where we're just surrounded by so much panic. I mean, there's so much going on. Don't you just want to pay $6,000 to go on a goop cruise with Gwyneth Paltrow so you can have an energy experience? Or do this. One of the biggest reasons as to why we're seeing wellness culture emerge stronger than ever and it's definitely going to stay is because the more times get rough the more people are desperate to seek any sort of comfort and especially escapism answers to soothe the racing mind this whole Miss Rona thing has created this opening for a lot of wellness gurus to peddle their immune boosting shots, their at-home tonics, to a newly receptive online audience. Everything is so accessible more than ever, and even though all of these things are mostly for the higher class, there are also things that are more accessible than ever because they're all switching to an online audience. For example, you can now pay a lot of money to do yoga, but online. You can pay a lot of money to attend Gwen's classes, but now it's online. Making this universe, this space of these perfect people that only exist to exude perfection through a screen to sell something to you. And the reason why it works is because the aesthetic that is associated with it is considered clean, whole, pure, healthy, well. A lot of these wellness gurus are conventionally attractive and it's not a coincidence. If they weren't, a lot of people wouldn't want to be like them. They'd have nothing to sell you. They look so happy and healthy after all. It's almost like whatever they're doing is working for them. They're seeing results. And unlike modern medicine, these wellness gurus actually sit down and listen to you and your problems and your concerns. They're willing to heal us with their pseudoscience. And this is why it's no surprise that wellness culture is becoming bigger than ever when we all know that here in the US, the medical system is... Mm, not the best, honestly. This is actually a point YouTuber Medlife Crisis brings up in his video called Don't Blame Gwyneth for Goop's Success. In this video, he talks about how this new worry and obsession with health isn't something new or something that came out of nowhere. There's a reason why people are obsessed with brands like Goop and why people would choose Goop over modern medicine. This reason being that, like I said, the, the whole healthcare system here in the US is absolutely awful. And in this video, he talks about how the medical system here in the US is failing so many people that people are desperate to seek any sort of answer to be heard, to be listened to, to have their concerns be taken seriously. And of course, there is a huge power in anecdotal testimonies. They're often told by attractive people in power who seem like they actually gotten results by doing what they're doing and people want to mimic that lifestyle to hopefully achieve the answer to whatever they're suffering with at the moment. So as of now, I think it's obvious to anyone that there is a huge war between modern medicine and a holistic approach by people like Gwyneth Paltrow who claim the only way to better your life is to actually distance yourself from modern medicine and instead to meditate the pain away. Meanwhile, doctors have just way too many patients on their hands to truly focus on you and your needs. So it's no wonder that people more than ever are willing to listen to a wellness guru and buy their magic beans than a modern doctor. Because let's just be honest, modern medicine, especially here in the US, does not get to the root of the problem. This is why people fly out to other countries to get their care done. But the problem is that neither does wellness culture. However, the difference is when people turn to wellness culture for answers, at least they feel like something is being done about their problems, which can start to become very dangerous. I cannot with this flower crown. It is just not wanting to sound my head, such as the jade egg lawsuit from Goop. Goop settled a $145,000 lawsuit concerning some of the claims made about their jade eggs, which are inserted in you, and it's not backed up by evidence, but they claim that it can correct your hormonal imbalances, boost sexual pleasure, prevent uterine prolapse, and even regulate periods. It's a pretty big claim, but obviously because of people turning to this and seeing no results and realizing, hmm, 
I just stuck something inside me for no reason. Goop has now been banned from advertising any products without possessing competent and reliable scientific evidence, according to the suit. Female sexual health is not taken seriously at all. Not even with like modern medicine. And wellness culture knows this. That's why women are the number one demographic that are taken advantage of the most when it comes to wellness culture, but also the medical industry. There is a gendered bias when it comes to patients. A survey conducted in early 2019 by Today found that more than one half of women compared with one third of men believe gender discrimination in patient care is a serious problem. One in five women say they have felt that healthcare providers have ignored or dismissed their concerns and their symptoms. And 17% say they feel that they have been treated differently because of their gender. And studies show that they're actually right. Compared with male patients, women who present with the same condition may not receive the same evidence evidence-based care. In several key areas such as cardiac care and pain management, women may get different treatment, leading to much poorer outcomes. And what's worse is that when it comes to women of color, they're taken even less seriously. Again, health in America is not a right, unfortunately. It is a privilege. And honestly, it sucks. But it does explain as to why the demographic you see that gets made fun of a lot is mostly women. People are obsessed with the false promises that the wellness industry offers them. The wellness industry is offering a safe and creative space. It's welcoming, has amber lit space where you can feel understood, cared for, and relaxed. And this can be very appealing to anyone. I tell my fiance all the time that if I were to wander into a forest and I saw like nine strangers dressed in all white in a drum circle singing kumbaya, surrounded by a little fire, and they asked me to join them, I mean, I wouldn't say no. Hell, I'll go to the store real quick and bring some s'mores. Even though I pretend to be serious and I talk about serious topics all the time on my YouTube channel. I am not smart. If something looks fun, I'm gonna join. The wellness industry is very cult-like already, but of course we all know the definition of a cult has to do with religions. It's a system of religions or just religious practices that has to do with an object or a person or a set of beliefs or the imagery that we usually associate with cults is like a small group of people who share the same beliefs, wearing the same thing, but are worshiping the devil. And you're probably thinking, how do those definitions fit into wellness culture? After all, there's no real religion being practiced, is there? And if wellness culture is all about bettering yourself and love and peace, how could that possibly be bad? But there is a third definition of cult that I feel fits a little bit better with this whole thing, and that is a misplaced or excessive admiration for a particular person or thing. I talked about earlier how the wellness industry kind of mimics religion based off of false promises and feeds off the desperate, especially feeds off of people who really just want to find hope. And there is a certain lifestyle and aesthetic dedicated to wellness culture, just as many religions. When it comes to religion, your entire life is molded by it. You become reliant on it. Honestly, the way I view it is if you give enough time, energy, attention, effort, praise, admiration, reverence in an extreme way to anything, I feel like that's low-key just in a way could be seen as a form of worship. You get what I'm getting at, right? The wellness industry has gurus, meditation circles, sacred garments. Okay, I'm just gonna stop because I know I'm starting to sound a little bit like Shane Dawson because I'm just digging a deeper and deeper hole. By the way, did you guys see that he's back? Everything that I've ever learned about that man has been against my will. Anyways, the wellness culture really plays along the lines of phobia indoctrination, which is what a lot of cults do. Phobia indoctrination is one of the principal ways a charismatic leader will lull potential followers into their indoctrination. And usually this is through causing people fear and anxiety, all while offering you the antidote to your fear and anxiety. You know, the way, the light, the truth. The truth. When it comes to Western religion, that fear and anxiety can be replaced with hell and demons, convincing people that they will go to hell with Elvis Presley and Michael Jackson. Yes, that's an actual thing. <laughs> I don't know guys, if hell has Michael Jackson, it sounds kind of lit. What's heaven gonna have? Joel Austin? No, thank you. Just kidding. I love you, Jesus. We are literally besties. He follows me on Instagram, so. The fear and anxiety within the wellness industry is that if you don't drink a green juice every day, if you don't meditate every day, if you don't have a harsh routine every single day, then you are going to literally die. Or if you don't spend $600 on a yoga mat, you will forever have racing thoughts of getting ill and then dying. The ritual of waking up early, making yourself a green juice, exercising, 
and doing all these things isn't a bad thing but it is bad when you start feeling guilty for not having that green juice when you start feeling like something's missing when you start feeling guilty when you don't eat something healthy just for even like a snack or if you skip on your daily meditation you feel this impending doom that something awful is going to happen to you the concept of achieving wellness at its most basic level is striving for the balance and health in our body and mind so at one point this concept has become so warped and honestly i just feel like everything just kind of fell into place for wellness culture there's chaos around us constantly the medical system is ass people feel like they're empty influencer culture is absolutely rampant right now and we have money and the accessibility to the internet where we can buy whatever we want whenever we want girl it was bound to happen but honestly i look at all these factors and it just boils down kind of to one thing our society Society has become very very soft and that's not me trying to pull a Ben Shapiro and be like this generation is very soft give a thumbs up for the worst Ben Shapiro impersonation you've ever heard <laughs> my wife has never had a WAP basically what I'm trying to say is that that's not me saying this generation is easily triggered and cancel culture is out to get you I think people are allowed to be emotional messes I think people are valid in their emotions I think people are allowed to get offended emotions are good they're healthy but in a way wellness culture is teaching you to numb that human side of you and social media has made it possible to where we have this access in our fingertips to complain about absolutely everything whenever we want no matter how big or how small i mean just look at twitter and that's why when i say we have become soft girl i don't think it's okay at the slightest inconveniences in life we have a complete breakdown and i'm laughing because i'm honestly not me feeling attacked by my own words it's almost like our addiction to social media is an addiction to finding fast relief from whatever we're feeling at the moment finding fast relief whenever something slightly goes wrong it's almost made us lack has made us lack strength patience and forbearance in our lives There's something called the happiness paradox. The happiness paradox being the more you strive for happiness by direct means, the more you end up less happy than if you forget about happiness altogether and focus on other goals, thus achieving happiness indirectly. This is a code that I feel like the wellness industry is always trying to crack. The goals of wellness culture is to try to get you to spend money on supplements, on yoga classes, to find wellness which will finally make you happy. But the problem is that happiness itself in this culture is still the ultimate goal and according to the happiness paradox will make you less happy either way even if you are focusing on other goals such as green smoothies and waking up earlier happiness is not something that's in our biology our primary emotions when we are born are anger sadness disgust contempt surprise and finally, joy. And joy is actually very different from happiness. Happiness means to be in a state of being happy. Joy means a feeling of great pleasure and happiness and rejoice. And the biggest difference is that joy is caused by elation at a moment in time. Happiness is mostly about self-pleasure, whereas joy can also come from feeling good for other people. As happiness, kind of at its basis, is all about materialistic possessions and worldly pleasures that can only satisfy you. And wellness culture ultimate goal is to find happiness which is a false promise it's false enlightenment there is an obsession with trying to find meaning in our lives and this obsession with trying to figure out who we truly are and we waste so much time on that that we forget that we can make ourselves into whoever we want. We can make our lives into what we want rather than just waiting for the answer. There's this constant existential dread that a lot of people feel that basically drives them to want to partake in these things. And I'm not gonna lie, even though wellness culture is kind of scummy and scammy, if that's what makes people feel like they finally have achieved that, then who am I to say that it's not real? especially if it's real to them. However, one can't ignore the fact that wellness culture is all about solving temporary negative emotions, especially negative emotions that you are trying to repress, that there is this cult-like underbelly to this culture where all you do is buy your way up to happiness by getting the next expensive item from goop to help you feel something in the beginning of this video i talked about a lot of wellness culture is just kind of a botched version of a lot of poc cultures and in many poc cultures it is a collectivist culture which emphasizes that there are needs and goals of the group 
that is considered far more important than the desires of each individual. But Americans have individualistic culture, which means that there is a stress of the needs of the individual over the group. And it's scientifically proven that East Asian cultures or Latin American cultures score higher on surveys of well-being and happiness compared to people who are a part of individualistic cultures. And a big part of this is because you already belong to a community, there's a lot of selflessness and a lot of altruism within those communities. Altruism being the belief or practice of disinterest and selfless concern for the well-being of others, an action that benefits another person over you. And this is actually a very controversial thing to talk about because it's a controversial take on mental health, happiness, wellness, and all of that, which is a whole nother video on its own. But altruism has been scientifically proven to make you happier and increase your overall well-being, especially when it's formed into habits. Because being kind to others takes away attention from us focusing on how miserable we are. It almost creates like this reward system in our brain. And I don't think that there's any coincidence that cultural appropriation, modern colonization, and capitalistic botched versions of POC cultures are a thing. And the true wellness and histories behind these cultures and practices have a lot to do with altruism and collective which is why there is this stereotype that Americans tend to whitewash traditional things from many cultures. I mean, just look at Taco Bell. Although I'm not gonna lie, whenever those nacho fries are back on the menu, the way I order five fries and just gulf them down to an episode of Jersey Shore, it's not healthy. It's not healthy. And will I keep doing that? Yes. Obviously, that doesn't mean that Americans aren't allowed to partake in other cultures. I think there's a big difference between cultural appreciation and cultural appropriation. The thing about wellness culture, again, is that it's all about appropriating these cultures and basically cherry picking these cultures and mashing them up into like this one weird capitalistic mess and then creating this false promise of that the more that you focus on yourself, the happier you will become, which to an extent, that is true. You should be able to make time for yourself, make sure that you're taking care of yourself, go to therapy sis, take care of your body, and you will feel better. You know, just do your best. But by focusing on others and truly trying to improve yourself and remaining in the present, we can improve both our own happiness and fulfill our most basic needs for social connection, which is something that we've been yearning for a lot, especially during such chaotic times. Even if you think people aren't for you, it's in our biology. We are told by social media all the time that the key to ultimate happiness is romantic relationships, money, luxury, when we should be valuing friendship, being proud of good work, and simplicity. All right, y'all, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I did not mean to get all Master Ugwe on y'all at the end. Noodles don't noodles that is my favorite quote from master ugwe i'm planning on getting it tattooed maybe you know right here on my arm or my forehead i don't know still deciding if you made it all the way to the end of this video please comment a duck emoji down in the comments below to let me know that you guys watched the whole video also down in the comments below please let me know what your opinion is have you guys fell into the web of wellness culture have you guys escaped it or are you guys like oh no this has definitely helped me you don't know what you're talking about either way let me know make sure you like and subscribe Subscribe if you want. I don't really care. No one's forcing you. All right, listen, listen, listen. If you guys want to support me and want to interact with me, follow me on my Instagram. Also, I make music, so go ahead and check that out because it's pretty good. This is my SoundCloud. But of course, guys, before this video ends, I want you guys to do something very important for me, which is to have a nice day today. Reach out to a loved one, go on a walk, or do nothing and stay inside all day and watch Netflix. Either way, just enjoy today. All right, again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. So, bye.